Jax five, um, or <laughs> Jax four and a half, almost five. When he was born, um, he was born by emergency C-section and he had some breathing problems after that, so he was in the hospital for three weeks at the Yukon Health Center, actually. They thought that maybe he wasn't neurologically quite normal. He was really irritable. Um, he wasn't latching on very well to bottles, wasn't feeding very well. So they ran a, a bunch of tests. His electroencephalogram was abnormal, which um, pointed toward the possibility of having brain damage. If it is brain damage, it's very minor, and what could happen is he could develop normally, which he probably will, or he could end up being diagnosed with cerebral palsy down the road. Around four months old, he started falling behind on his milestones. I definitely knew that he wasn't developing normally. Uh, it was obvious that he wasn't doing anything he should have been. He hadn't started babbling, he hadn't started crawling. By the time he was a year old, they said he definitely has microcephaly and they diagnosed him with cerebral palsy. <laughs> he started having these episodes we thought might be seizures. Um, when he, I don't, It had to be after he was a year old. It's all kind of fuzzy, but, but I took videos of him and put them on YouTube with um, a comment of other parents with kids that have seizures, could you tell me if you think these are seizures? Because um, there are these really weird episodes where he would just lose all the tone in his body and just kind of faint for a second and come right back. Someone emailed me who was a mother and she said, um, have you ever gotten your son tested for Angelman syndrome because he looks like my daughter who has Angelman syndrome? So Angelman syndrome uh, in most cases arises from a, a, de a deletion, a part of the chromosome is missing, so it's just a random error that occurs in nature. And the part uh, that's missing, uh, because there's a piece of the chromosome missing, there's also some uh, genes that make proteins, which is what we need to live, are missing. His body isn't producing this protein that it needs. And those missing proteins cause uh, this Angelman syndrome, which is really characterized by um, a movement disorder, so the individuals when they're young, the children have difficulty walking, uh, they have what's called a taxis, so they kind of walk uh, in a very shakily way. They also have, uh, many of them have seizures, uh, they also have a disorders uh, related to intellectual ability, in other words, uh, they'll never speak but more than five words. He doesn't speak, but he uses his voice a lot to communicate what he wants, and he uses a lot of facial expressions, and um, he's really animated. He's upset or um, something's happening that he doesn't like. He'll have like a sad face, like he has this little pouty lip thing that he does. He's started to do things where if we ask him a question and he, the answer's yes, he'll get excited and he'll smile. Um, but if the answer's no, he'll just ignore us or scoot away. Um, so he's starting to be able to communicate a little bit. I had to convince his pediatrician to order the tests for me because he didn't think that it would be possible to have a brain injury and Angelman syndrome because he was assuming the brain injury thing was correct. And it was, it was a big relief to me because he, he fit in so well when we saw like other videos of kids and other pictures of kids, um, talked to other parents. He looked like these other kids, he moved like them, he finally, it, it was like everything made sense. Like his, he's like fit into this disorder. It was a big relief to me because when we thought he had cerebral palsy, it, it was like it would have been because of having brain damage, because of something that happened. And it, to me, it was like he could have developed normally if things went differently. Right. And that was really painful to think that he was the way he was just because something happened. Knowing it's genetic, it's, there's, there's nothing that we could have done. He was like that from the moment he was conceived. Jack's a pretty happy guy. He's really social. He's always been interested in other people. It seems like he can be sort of goal-oriented. You know, he'll see an object from across the room that he wants, or he'll see somebody, or, you know, recognize a face, and, uh, you know, he, he'll go get it. And what happens when he gets it? Uh, he, he explodes with laughter. <laughs> yeah. Know, he's, he's just really happy. When he, when he gets something that he wants, you know, or especially if he if he sees if he sees someone, it'd be at me or sunshine or a, a friend or something like that. 
he'll grab you by the face mm -hmm. and just like make loud noises at you and like smile at you. He smiled early, laughed early, like earlier than typical kids even. And um, he's still that way. Jack really likes crinkly things. He loves plastic, so we have to be careful um, about leaving plastic out. He loves water. Bath time's like his favorite time of the day. He likes beads. <laughs> he likes the, the beads on the wire or little, he likes to manipulate little parts on toys. It's, it's a relief and it's hard sometimes seeing um, older kids with it and adults with it mm -hmm. because, I mean, it's nice to know what to ex expect, but it's also difficult. It was especially difficult the first time we saw adults with it because some of them were so impaired. So it's a, it's a blessing and a curse, I think. They did. Now fruit is free, essentially. Fruit and a lot of vegetables are free. And they just started incorporating a lot of fiber and 